All right, big head, Eddie Spaghetti. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's fucking do this. Rear naked takes. We are in the building. Fuck TikTok. We are live. <laughs> Ed, it is time. What you sipping on? Some fucking water. Um, some lean. Some lean. But yeah, guys, uh, we are out here. Rear Naked Takes post show of UFC 285. In my opinion, uh, average card. Um, to Pretty be good. To be fair, I, I was barbecuing a lot. It fucking sucked because my triceps weren't done till the end of the fight. So, Ed, in, real, in all honesty, I only really watched the co-main and the main event. I was in and out for all the rest of the fight. So, you're going to have to break those down to a T for us. But overall, my perspective, it wasn't, oh, my God, card of the year, whatever type of shit. It also wasn't a snoozer. I would say it's pretty average, so pretty good card. Um, Not bad at all. Ed, what do you think about the UFC 285 as a whole? Yeah, we have some big moments in the card. Pretty good fights. Obviously, some of them ended a lot sooner than we thought they would. Um, but if I were to rate it, I'd say like 7.5 out of 10, 7.5 to 8. Yeah, it's it's pretty average. I I mean, yeah, I mean that's that's all I could say. It was just a pretty average card. Um, pretty. I'd cool. say good. Mm -hmm. I say good. That's it. Just just good. That's my opinion. Yeah. Least. Um. <clears throat> so what do you think about Jake uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and and him filming for that Roadhouse movie in the middle of of the fights? He's kind of he's yeah, kind of. He's kind of he's giving me badass, honestly. He's giving me uh Michael B. Jordan vibes with Creed, so he's giving me McGregor vibes. How dominant his performance was. Yeah. That boy Per better watch out. They uh I was because Ariel Hawani was live today and I was listening to um the live and some of his co-hosts were saying that Roadhouse is a uh, um. It's not necessarily based on someone that's in the UFC or a fighter. It's based on an ex UFC fighter, which is why they had that scene. Yeah, because the original Roadhouse, the guy Dalton is like a he was like like a mercenary pretty much for for uh, for bouncers. And and then um, yeah, I don't think it had anything to do with like boxing or fighting. Um, but I get, I mean, I guess. That's how the movie's gonna start. Is he was a fighter and he probably got kicked out because he was dirty or something. I don't know. So yeah, it says. Not, uh, so is McGregor gonna be like the main villain? In no, the movie, you think? I, I, no, I don't even think he. I don't think he's in the movie. I think he's just a, a director. No, they said he's. A, he said he's a main character. Oh, then fuck! I don't know, dude. It'll be interesting gonna, to see. Cause that guy Dalton, which was Gyllenhaal, that's the the main protagonist. A shout out to the boy Ricky. What's up? It's your boy Rick the Ruler Twelve in the chat. I fear God, boy. The boy fears God, boy. Um, it says the film follows a former former UFC fighter, this being Jalen Hall, who takes a job as a bouncer at a rough and tumble roadhouse in Florida Keys, but soon discovers that not everything is what it seem seems in this tropical paradise. McGregor, McGregor's role is unknown at this time. He is expected to play an original character and not himself. Interestingly mm. enough, in 2015, it was announced that former UFC bantamweight champion Ronda Rousey would star in the remake. This project was canceled in 2016. Well, there you go, Ed. That is weird, though, that, that Jake Gyllenhaal plays a UFC fighter and McGregor doesn't even play a UFC fighter. Well, that boy, uh, Jalen played a good boxer in The Fighter. Yeah. That was a pretty good movie. I saw Creed 3. Creed 3 was pretty good. I'd say 8 out of 10. Wasn't the, guy, wasn't the guy from Rocky in the movie? Yeah, what? he was. As I was going to say, isn't the guy from Rocky in the movie? That Balboa guy? Rocky Balboa, the main character? No. Been with me for about a year, busting nut is fuck. There's already talks going in the chat, Ed. You gotta go calm down your fans. 
I'm about to get through the matchups quick. All right, so how's this going to go down? Should we kick it off? Some prelims? Yeah, let me uh, transition over to the... <clears throat> to the card. All right, Ian, where, where do you want to start it off? All right, so in the strawweight division, um, about the third fight of the night, Tabitha Ritchie had a nice submission against Jessica Penne. She moves up. Um, a lot of people are simping over her. To cap uh, off the Lionel. early prelims, <laughs> to cap off the early prelims, Ian Machado, Gary against Son Kennan. This, honestly, was a fucking badass fight. I thought it was a really good fight by, you know, Son Kennan had a moment, but Ian Gary, dude, so fucking sharp. He's just, his striking has just looked so much better as each and every fight have progressed. I mean, when you look at the numbers, it was 127 total strikes to 61, landing at a 55% rate. No takedowns, no sub attempts. Um, although, in that first round, end of the first round, he was winning the round, he got clipped. He got clipped bad by Song Kennan. Um, and man, he looked like he was in trouble. Um, but he was able to, you know, close the distance and then ride out the rest of the round. It was about like 40 seconds that he lasted. And then boom, in that second round, dude, he was just piecing him up. I'm telling you, he looked sharp. He looked quick. His striking looked nice. His combos. I mean, he always has pretty good combos that he can put together. But man, his head movement looked solid. And then in that third round, that third round, he just like yells at him. He yells at him with like about a minute or two to go. And then unleashes, starts bombing him, um, and then ends up finishing him via TKO's uh, punches. So, I mean, Ian Gary, man, his nickname's a future for a reason. He continues his undefeated streak. Um, and apparently he was going to get down in the parking lot with some random guy. So <laughs> that was pretty crazy. Um, Amanda Hebas in the women's flyweight, she had a pretty good victory against Vivian Araujo. Uh, she was able to be a pest, keep the... Keep the um, the pace going, put on the pressure, won that fight. In the middleweight division, Derek Brunson against DDP, Drico Duplessis. Uh, um, man, Brunson in that first round had some moments, dude. He was catching Duplessis. Um, you know, he, he took him down. He was riding him out. But, dude, I don't know. Brunson's cardio just isn't there, man. Well, Duplessis' Duplessis's cardio is kind of very similar. Right, right. Neither are there. But the thing is, Duplessis was able to just, you know, catch him just a couple more times. Yeah. And the second fight in a row that Derek Brunson's uh, corner had to throw in the towel. So, man, that sucks. That mm -hmm. really sucks. Um, his career might be over in his tweet. He said, thank you to all who has followed my career. He didn't officially retire, but looks like he might. I don't know. Uh, and then at the end, prelims, uh, feature prelim of the night, we had Cody Garber and Trevin Jones. Honestly, a lot of people are mad at this fight. Um, and I get why they're mad. I get that why they're saying like, oh, you know, Cody didn't do anything. He was just, he's washed this and that. And it, yeah, that's fine. But when you look at movement that Cody had, when you look at his speed, he looked very, very good, very sharp. He did say he had a stinger, uh, before warming or during his warmups that caused like numbness. And yeah, he wasn't aggressive. He picked and chose his shots, but. At the same time, he smart he fought a smart fight, especially after coming off, you know, being tagged, you know, finished, knocked out. Like it's tough, man. It's tough. And he was able to come in, not get tagged, not get knocked out. But on top of that, you know, put on a pretty good performance to pick apart Trevin Jones. So good for Cody Garbrandt, man. No loves on the, on his way back. Um, and yeah, that brings us to the main card. And before oh, we and, and before we get into the main card, I wanted to uh, pick your brain on something because I um I was reading there's uh I read a comment I'm not I don't think it was an official statement by any MMA guys but they were saying that if they throw uh Cody Garbrandt another two warm up fights I wouldn't say similar to this one but another two like fights that are pretty winnable for him that he could probably end up fighting Sean O'Malley just to get that one out of the way. And to give the fans what they want. But at the same time, if Sean continues on this hot streak that he's on, I don't think he'll ever fight him. Unless uh, Sean loses, maybe his next fight, takes some time off, and then fights Cody Garbrandt for a warm-up and kind of puts him back in there. What do you think? 
Uh, that's tough, man. He he'd have to after this fight, his next fight, he'd have to look really, really good. Um, but if he fights a guy with you know good power, good speed, and I don't know, I don't know, he he's gonna have to honestly. Cody's on a new trajectory in his career where he's gonna have to start proving people wrong. Yeah. Um, and I mean, if he can, he can. Like I said, he's still fast. He looked very good in terms of like his body. So if he can put that together, um, maybe he can potentially get. Because keep in mind, he's not very old. I think he's like thirty. What like thirty one, thirty two? Yeah, that's what, that's what I was gonna. That's what I was gonna look up right now. Yeah, because when he became champion, he became champion at like twenty six or twenty seven years old. And that was insane because at that age, he put together some of the best performances ever against um, uh, Dominic Cruz. Yeah, I think he's 32 years yeah, old. He's, he's on his way 31. to be 33. Yeah, he's, no, he's 31 on his way to be 32. So he turns, okay, 30, he turns so. 32 in July. Yeah, so still at a fairly good age, he could bounce back in his career. And if he does, it'll be good to see. Um, I mean, we've seen people doing it before. Charles Oliveira did it fairly with this career but um yeah it bantamweight's no joke so they it, it's not a place where you could just fill people out you know in that yeah. division yeah. 130 if he fights like somebody like song and dong ooh, he might be in trouble right all right continue ed now on to the main card uh what everybody's been waiting for main card first fight of the night we had bo nickel against jamie pickett um Somewhat of a controversy because once Bo Nickel had Jamie Pickett in the clinch, it looked like a low blow to the nuts. Um, it was like a knee that which led to a takedown, which led to a submission uh, by Bo Nickel. So this was actually my rear naked pick of the night. He did attempt a rear naked choke. Um, however, he didn't finish it. He ended up finishing him via what was it like? Like triangle choke. Was, or like uh, I, I, it looked well. The I I saw the clip whenever he took him down, and then with the nut shot, it was on some type like, of choke. Yeah, it looked like a dart choke, possibly. Um, that was our. It was a on topology. It says it's um arm triangle choke. So yeah, so it was like a triangle. Um, so I mean, yeah, you can make the case. Maybe hit him in the nuts. Maybe he took him down. But bro, like it's a fight. Like shit's gonna happen. Everything's gonna move so fast. You know, it sucks, but if you're not going to protest loud enough for a stoppage, then you just better be ready to get in there and, you know, start tussling, especially with a guy like Bo Nickel, who did. He only threw three strikes in this fight, um, but ended the fight in the first round within three minutes. So, I don't know, dude. He looks he looks good. He yeah. did start off with, like, a kick, and he ate shit. That shit was funny as fuck, um, and it, you know, kind of made him look like a joke, but I don't, you know, he's no joke. He's solid. Yeah, um, uh, Henry Cejudo said that he believes that this guy is already on his way uh, to be champion sh or to be a champion. Not obviously in the rankings, it doesn't show that he's ready. But Henry Cejudo is saying that he believes he's actually ready for someone inside the top ten, top five. That stylistically, he believes that Bo Nick was a nightmare for for people like Izzy. Um, which I mean, to be fair. Again, and I said it on the last one, the most champions in the UFCs comes with, or they start off with a, a strong wrestling grappling foundation. Bo Nick was one of those fighters, and there's not a whole lot of Bo Nickels type people in the middleweight division. I mean, you can you can throw Hamza in there, but Hamza, to be fair, he's he fights at welterweight as well. So when you look at the champion in Bellator, his name is Johnny Eblen. Um, he's another, another like wrestle type first type of fighter, pressure fighter. Um, and he's undefeated in Bellator and he's like taking everybody out and people are saying that he, you know, he could compete out here. He reminds me of him because that wrestling's there, you know, primarily that ground and pound, but you know, they're, they're those pesky fighters. So that's, that's who Bo Nickel kind of reminds me of is Johnny Eblen of uh, Bellator current champ. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I I don't I don't know uh, really who Johnny Eblen is. I've heard of the name, but every time I hear like these people from fucking Bellator trying to get in the mix with people at UFC, it's kind of not that it's frustrating to me, but it's like, dude, like how many times have have has there been 
a matchup between like someone from like a B League level um, promotion, and then they fight with people in the UFC, and they absolutely get mollywopped. So, yep, I don't know. They're they're different um, organizations for a reason. Yep, yep, yep. <clears throat> I think they both train together, actually. By the way, that oh, top they? team. I forgot Nichols that top team. Yeah, he is. All right, we got a bot in the chat. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> um, I don't. Busted. I said Ian Gary's dog shit round one. He just got clocked once, but it wasn't dog shit. He was just starting off slow. Happens to everybody, but. You saw you saw it finish. Keep down. Keep down and bust. Lionel Kama said, I'm him. Bust and I said, I'm back. Lionel Kama said, DDP has no gas tank, sadly. That's true. Bust and I said, Lionel is equivalent to Sterling as a champ. Wow. Wow. Oh, yeah. A, t- a, take, a take can be given for that. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. All right. Moving on. This was a fight to decide who wins the championship between me and Gonzo, Matias, Gamrot, and Jalen Turner. Pretty controversial scorecard, I would say. But, I mean, the scoring went kind of how I figured it would be. It kind of knew it was going to be a split decision. However, the way the first round went, um, I did not, you know, I was not surprised by a judge giving Matias a 30-27. And so, you know, that being said, giving him the first round. Matias, man, he was a pest. He was in there. He was trying to get in there with Jalen Turner. Um, you know, his punches were landing pretty good. Uh, he was throwing a little bit of leg kicks, but, you know, just that pressure, the takedowns. Jalen was a hard person to take down. He was using his leg to get back up uh, every single time. What I was surprised of, and this was, you know, a common theme throughout the card, the refs were stepping in fairly early to break up a clinch, to break up ground position. And it was, you know, it was a little weird because it seemed very early. Like, I've seen fights where they're there for a minute and nothing happens and nobody, you know, does shit a la fucking um, Magomed and Goliath and Jan Blahovich, right? N- no progress at all. Brett doesn't step in at all. However, right now, and Joe Rogan said it the best, the fighters, they earned that position. They fought for that position. Now you have to give them, you know, time with that position to let them go. You know, the other fighter, it's their responsibility to work their way out. If there absolutely is no action going on, fine, stand them up. But if there is, like, even a little bit, you got to keep it going. And in that Valentina fight, same thing. You know, she was striking Gonzo mid-strike. Mid-strike, they picked up Valentina. Mid-strike. Um... And then Valentina hits um, Grasso while the ref stopped her, and she like apologized, but that wasn't her fault. Yeah, I had it, seen. I had seen the sh- ref like stepped in. I saw so, that shit. I didn't. I didn't know it was a common theme throughout the whole night, but I did see that, and I yeah. was. I was kind of confused too. But so, yeah, so it was going on a lot. I noticed that a lot in this round. However, um, I mean, Matias Gamrot, man, high level MMA. Jalen Turner, though, for taking this two weeks notice, you know that was. That was, you know, he has that dog in him, but that boy Matias, man, came through for me. Mm-hmm. You already know. <sighs> the champ is here, baby. It's all right, Ed. Um, I'll, I'll get it back in the next one. I'm not it is all right. Back. It is all right. <clears throat> I think I saw more title defenses than you, so yeah. If you're a champ, if you're a champ, tap in. If you're a champ, tap in right now. Let me see them. <laughs> let me see them crowns. Oh, let yeah. Let me see them crowns. Uh, belt stay in N six six one. I mean, I mean, I guess. Moving on. I moving work on. in the six six one, buddy. The next fight, Jeff Neal and Shafkat Rockmanov. Holy shit! This was a fucking good ass fight. Jeff Neal, man, nothing. You know, you can tell Jeff Neal probably wasn't the most skilled MMA fighter in that cage with Shafkat Rockmanov, but at the same time, dude is a fucking scrapper. Really good boxer, has fucking hands of steel, hence his nickname. Bro, in that first round, Shavkat, you know, and him were just going at it. Shavkat looked like he tried to stand with them. He went for takedowns. Um, you know, his percentage wasn't even that great. He was he was 0-4, 0-4 takedowns the entire fight. That boy, you know, Jeff Dio was doing really good. The thing that helped Shavkat, though, is his, his striking came at so many angles, leg kicks, 
a lot of body shots. Um, and then he was landing a lot of head punches. However, when you get to that that third round or second round, at the end of the second round, I believe, Jeff tagged Shafkot, you know, almost knocked him down. Holy shit, man, that was a moment. Jeff Neal close, really close on coming up with that upset. But, dude, they were battering each other. And at the end, Shafkot got him by the back and choked him um, from a standing position, rear naked choke from a standing position. That's some serious shit. Um, a lot of people are comparing him and Hamza, you know, because of their rise, because of their rankings, how they were both undefeated. But, man, I don't know. Looking at this fight, I think Hamza, you know, doesn't struggle with either of these guys, honestly. Um, don't think, get me wrong. Like, I think Shavkat. it's probably the pace. The pace that Hamza can put on Shavkat, I believe, yeah. is probably going to want to overwhelm him. And the just we've seen Hamza take brutal shots from Gilbert Burns. And, I mean, Shavkat took some brutal shots from Jeff Neal, but at the same time, like, by the end of the first round, Hamza had already knocked down Gilbert Burns, one of the best, you know, UFC fighters of our time, welterweight fighters, right? And then it looked like Shafkat was, you know, barely trying to stay up there for a bit. So, I don't know. So where do I you think Hamza? <clears throat> where, I think where, Hamza's up on this. Where do you think Shafkat Rachmanov ranks in that division? Is he properly inside the top ten? Should he be inside yeah. the top five, top three? Is he a title contender? What do you think? I think he's top ten for sure. I see him at top ten. About top five. Uh, it could be, could be. I I see a possibility. Mm -hmm. Although he was calling out Stephen uh, Wonder Boy Thompson, and let me tell you, the way Shafkat was fighting, if he were to fight that way against Stephen Thompson, you know, I'd give Wonder Boy a bigger shot than a lot of other people would, because Wonder Boy striking in his last fight was fucking beautiful. Wonderful, but Wonder Boy striking has always been, you know, just art. He can go toe to toe with Shafkat if it was all striking. Obviously, you know, it's an MMA fight. You know, if Shafkat wants to go down, take him down, he probably could. But, you know, he's talking all that shit, saying like he could keep it on the feet. Okay, do that against Wonder Boy, hundred percent feet. Who knows? Uh, Lionel um, Thomas asked, "What about Holland?" Shafkat does not destroy Holland the way Hamza did. That's for damn sure. But you think Shafkat would be uh would take him out? I think he has he could beat him. Do you think Kevin Holland has a chance? I'd give Kevin Holland a way better chance at Shafkat Rachmanov than I do against Hamza Chimaev. That's for sure. Yeah. Um and it was a cool thing too. Jeff Neal missed weight, obviously loses like twenty to thirty percent of his purse. And also, when a fighter misses weight, they're not supposed to earn any of the bonuses that they uh, get. But Dana said at the post-fight press conference that, fuck that rule, you know, there's no way in hell that we were not going to give Jeff Neal uh, his bonus money after fighting that fight. So shout out to Dana, being a dog, being a boy. Yeah. Um, but holy shit, man. <clears throat> this brings us to the co-main event of the evening. Women's flyweight title bout. Holy shit. I mean, you can start this one off. This was insane. Insane. That's Biggest all I can of the year so far. Look. When I when I pick as a fan, they call me biased. When I pick honestly, they call me a fraud. You can't please everyone, but you can damn please Mexico with this fucking win. Alexa Grosso. Rear naked, rear naked choke on Valentina Shevchenko. That is fucking the craziest thing I've I've ever seen, dude. It's like, you you talk about being an underdog, dude, and it's like, look, I mean, I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I know what the dog is in like these Mexican fighters, but they have a lot of heart. They've proven time and time again in combat sports that they have a lot of heart. We've had plenty of champions in the past. We've had uh. Who, uh, Marquez in, in boxing, we had fucking De La Hoya, we've had uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, you know, we've had all these Canelo Alvarez, like there's 
there's a lot of great Mexican fighters out there. And the good part is that they're finally getting the recognition in the UFC, which is why Dana White is making the PI over there trying to get more exposure because he definitely has a lot of faith in Mexico. And I mean, to be fair, we, we I mean, Brandon Moreno, we saw the first fight with him and Figgy, how much of a great fight that was. And we saw him finish him in the second one. Then we saw the another great fight in the third one. And then he ultimately finishes him again in the fourth. Um, yeah, your Rodriguez, he, he puts on that stellar performance versus Max Holloway. And yes, like, I feel like just seeing that fight itself showed me enough about yeah, your Rodriguez that he deserves to be where he's at. Then he has that fight with uh, Brian Ortega. Probably it was not the best fight, obviously, because he got uh, Brian Ortega got hurt. But then he goes on to fight um, Josh Emmett and fucking completely destroys him and puts on a, another great performance. And he becomes the intern champ. And now you have Alexa Grosso. Look, I'll be honest. Since I turned full heel, as like as you guys would like to call it on this show. I definitely did step up my game as far as keeping up with Mexican fighters. Um, so that being said, I think whenever um, Alexa Grosso fought Joanne Wood is whenever I really started to pay attention to her. Because I'm like, if I'm over here going to be portraying the Mexican protagonist, right? Or like someone who's going to be well, heavily biased towards the Mexican fighters. I'm going to, I got to start keeping up with anyone who actually... Uh, poses or like some sort of threat inside the top five. So then Alexa Grosso comes into the into the um the ranks, and I start keeping up with her, and I see the performances that she puts on versus Joanne Wood, uh, Vivian. I don't even know how to pronounce that chick's last name, and now Valentina Shevchenko. It's like she's a lot better than what people thought, and I, I mean I understand it. Like not a lot of people keep up with the female divisions, and fuck, I mean I'm a victim of it as well. Like I don't know a whole lot of the female fighters, but obviously since Alexa Grosso is Mexican, I was gonna keep up with her very closely, and I kept there's just something within me that kept telling me like, bro, she actually can compete, but I'm like I don't know if she could compete with Valentina Shevchenko, given the fact that she has fucking eight title defenses in that weight division, given the fact that she's absolutely dominant versus the majority of every fighter that she fights, it's not even fucking close. Uh, besides her last fight versus, uh, what was her last fight, Ed? We saw it. Valentina's last fight that she barely won versus Talia Santos. That's the yeah. only one that she, that wasn't super dominant. Prior to that, she fought Lor uh, Lauren Murphy, which was pretty dominant. She fought Jessica Andrade, which was dominant. And, um, the, I mean, the list goes on. And she's fought, like, the elite of the elite. She's fought in people like uh, Jessica I, uh, Joanna John Jacek, and fucking Amanda Nunez twice. Juliana Pena, Holly Holmes, and I mean, it's she has like the res a really polished resume and a lot of experience. It could be the fact that she's like gone to a point in her life where she's not as ambitious with the with the championship as much as she used to be. But no, I could promise you one thing that like some of these Mexican fighters who who are Mexican born and raised, they don't come from like anything. Uh, Alexa Grasso, she was born and raised in Jalisco, and um, that's fucking a drug ridden state for um as 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 far as we know and shit like that so it, it's it, it's it's pretty cool to see fighters like her that come like with these crazy backgrounds and actually put on a show an underdog show and pr really prove everybody wrong i mean yes oh, I, you I, yes mean a, you mean a background like Oliveira? uh yeah well yeah shit like that right? yeah like shit like, like that gutter? yeah well yeah oh uh, okay um okay like okay. great, like crazy backgrounds, like so that. they're kind well, of the same, right? So they're kind of the same, right? Yeah, in a sense. What are you trying to get at? I'm just saying. Oh. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, can't. If the proof is in the pudding, I can't. I can't take that away from anybody. I mean, if they have like, like, um, I'm not gonna say she fucking comes from the favelas. I probably uh advocate for Charles Oliveira and probably his background and upbringing was a lot worse than hers. But I could tell you that uh, being born and raised in Mexico isn't the best either. It's not like being born and raised in America. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not saying one's worse than the other. I'm just yeah, I'm but saying I, they're kind of the same in a sense. But um, yeah, I mean, shit. I don't even. Ed, you kind of distracted me from my take. But I remember whenever I was watching this fight, I I like obviously I I said it in the last part. My heart definitely wants Alexa Grasso to win. The Mexican in me wants her to win. The fan in me wants her to win. But obviously, I'm out here trying to make the most honest takes that I can. So I did ride with uh, Valentina Shevchenko. 
Um, and boy, was I wrong. And I'm happy that I was wrong. And, you know, whenever I poured that shot, because um, me and my all my friends and shit like that, we were playing this game that we submit our picks. And whenever our fighter loses, we take a shot. That was probably the most proudest shot I've ever taken because Alexa Grosso rightfully so proved me wrong. And I was more than happy to take that shot. Shit, if she would have if I would have chose Alexa Grosso, I would have still probably taken a shot. That's how happy I was. But, I mean, it, it was just amazing to say the least. Uh, she's up right now, dude. She she's uh, I think she sits at about 600,000 followers on Instagram. And that she ha she's getting that Mexican love treatment by Mexicans across the world right now. So, uh, big congratulations to her. That's a breakdown of the fight in, within itself. That first round, uh, definitively, it was for Alexa Grosso. I remember I told Ed that I thought it was for Shevchenko. But that was me trying not to be biased. I was actually trying to find every way to see Valentina for her to get that round. But Ed said it was it was for Alexa Grosso, and I feel like a lot of other people would agree. So um, that first round was all Alexa Grosso. That second round was uh, Shevchenko because she started switching it up after she started feeling the powers and, and, and realizing that she can't really do anything with the boxing. Um, so she started taking her down. It was, it was great to see, though, Alexa working on the ground because there's people that we've seen that whenever they get taken down on the ground like that, they really don't do anything. And dude, Alexa was working, bro. She was working, working, working. She did everything she could to get out of that position and she did it. But obviously like because of control time and things like that, she didn't, that round didn't go to her. Uh, the third round, it was getting a little bland for me. So I wasn't, I was kind of in and out and people weren't really paying attention because they weren't really fucking with the fight itself. They were just kind of getting bored and not, and not really paying attention. Um, and then come the fourth, the fourth round is fucking beautiful. What, what had happened, you know, Alexa Grosso was definitely training for that or waiting for that back kick or whatever. And what kind of kick is that spinning back kick? Is that what they call it? Yeah. Like a jumping spinning. Back yeah. Kick. She, she was waiting for that kick the whole fight and dude, like it rightfully. So like I, I, it was a beautiful last technique. Usually when that happens, people back up and they're just like, holy fuck, I don't want anything of that. But Alexa Grosso, when she saw that back, she immediately moved to to avoid the kick and just fucking pounced on her and then took her. And then Alexa, I mean, Valentina Shachenko for sure started um, panicking because she kind of like ducked down and put her arms up because she didn't want to get hit in the face. But then eventually she got like uh, jumped on and then she just immediately fell to her knees. And then it, it was a wrap from there. It was just so fucking quick so high level and things like that. And there's a lot of arguments that are being said that, oh, Valentina Shevchenko probably had a bad night. Valentina Shevchenko wasn't ready, yada, 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 that she wins probably like eight out of the 10 fights. It, I mean, I, I could see those types of arguments being for the Izzy fight with Alex Pereira, right? Because he was winning the whole fight. I could see that also with uh, um, Edwards and, and Usman. I could see that, you know what I mean? Just one shot to to really put him away. But it, it's kind of hard to put that on like that because I feel like there was just so much technique imposed on this. It wasn't it was it wasn't like a, what people like to call a lucky hit. It wasn't anything like that. She was anticipating that that spinning back kick the whole fight. She found that opening. She and she immediately capitalized on it and she ultimately made her tap. So I, I think, though, she'll get the immediate rematch. Just, I feel like depending how, how that'll go, Valentina probably can etch a win. But I, I feel like as of now, Alexa Grosso probably has shown enough to me that she could probably still win that next one. So we'll just we'll just wait and see how, how, um, how prepared she is for that next fight. But fuck, dude, to say the least, like, that was crazy to see. And, um, yeah, well, Mexico technically has three champions now um the year two, just two undisputed tech tech yes two undisputed that's why i said technically there's three title holders i guess that'd be a, a good a good way to put it there's three i title love you here but that silver belt don't count yeah so and i love you here <clears throat> it's it's cool to see it's cool to see all i care about is the recognition for the for mexico the the fighters out there and shit like that because this only paves the way you got you got a fucking monster in and Raul. You know what I mean? He's young as fuck, dude. And by the time he's in his actual prime, a lot of that division's gonna be uh, pretty old or long gone. So he he's we might get a, a fourth one, you know, not soon, 
but some down sometime down the future it would be cool to see all four of them together but yeah well i feel like we'll definitely get a champion out of uh Raul in the in the later years so yeah that's that's all i got i mean i was fucking pumped that's all i could say yeah that was pretty good take pretty good take by gonzo not gonna lie um so on my end of the spectrum my bias is held differently i bias on fighters based on if i like them or not could give a fuck less you know what you are where you rep um however i will say this it is pretty cool to see what we saw um especially like gonzo was saying a lot of mexican fighters don't get the recognition they deserve so it was dope um but i mean i'm gonna call it like i see it grosso capitalized on you know a technique made by um valentina and she beat her she beat her fair and square um you know it wasn't like it doesn't leave a bad taste in my mouth like it does aljo winning the belt it doesn't leave a bad taste in my mouth like you know it does um like that that magomed yon fight where they fucking tied and it was just you know just bad mma like this was 100 percent Oh, Alexa Grosso finishing her. Fini- and you can tell Valentina, like, had no choice. Just look at the pressure on her head that Grosso had from that choke. Like, she had it. She had a choke in. There was, you know, there was nothing you could, to- you could do. And, like, when she tapped, yeah, she tapped slowly. But, like, that was a clear tap. I was hearing, like, m- you know, murmurs, whispers, like, oh, did she really tap? Like, no. That was 100% tap. I think the reason it she tapped so slow was like a pride thing. Like she was more so like, holy shit, somebody got me. Um, but yeah, I mean, I scored that round similar to the judges. I had Grasso winning that first one. Her boxing did look super, super sharp. However, it wasn't a clinic um, by all means, by either fighter, uh, because Valentina did have a lot of success in the stand up with her jab. She was catching Grasso with her jab. She was, um, you know, keeping that distance with her jab. And not only that, she was having success with the takedowns. Grasso did do a good job, you know, getting up on some of them. In that third round, though, that's where Valentina had her down for the majority of the round, had that control time. But she was actually doing something with it. She was, you know, putting together some strikes. She had Grasso almost, like, in a crucifix-like position um, at one point in the fight. But then in that third round, that's when uh, Herzog, I think, um, brought them back up. But that was in the third round, not the fourth. The fight finished in the fourth. So it didn't, re- I don't think it really had anything to play with the finish. Like, that was just, just all what happened. And I think even Herzog knew he made a mistake. I mean, somebody tweeted at him, like, yo, why did you do this? And he said to himself, like, he's gotten enough feedback that he has to reevaluate why it happened. And, you know, like I said, like, it, it makes sense when they try to pick up the pace, but it doesn't make sense when it happens so soon when there is activity. So that was, to me, a 100% bad call. Did it affect the fight? No. Valentina still won that round. Won that round in the judges' scorecards. Doesn't matter. But yeah, insane. It it reminded me of Juliana Pena like beating Amanda Nunez because, I mean, I've said it before, like, you're the best, you're at the top until you're not. And, you know, in this night tonight, Valentina was not, you know, is yeah. not the queen of the flyweights. Whereas Amanda Nunez, she was like an enigma herself. Like she, nobody could beat her, right? Boom, here comes Pena, brings a pace, you know, after a, a troublesome first round and then finishes her rear, rear naked choke, just like this one. Um, So I just crazy, crazy ending. Yeah, uh, that, that is a, a pretty good comparison that you make to the Juliana Pena fight. But I, I feel like, Amanda Nunez really was just out of her element in that fight, dude. I, I, I mean, the choke wasn't even locked in at the end of that one, and she tapped, and she looked pretty sloppy the whole fight. Uh, then this one, I mean, I feel like Valentina could have had an off night, but it didn't look like it was a super off night because she was still trying to do stuff and capitalize on on everything that she could have, but. That's why I'm you, saying you don't know until we see the rematch, right? And that's what I, then that's what I'm saying. Like I feel like whenever they had the rematch with Juliana Pena and Amanda Nunez, it was more okay. I feel like Amanda Nunez is gonna win. You know what I mean? I was like, I was a fluke, and I mean, we clearly saw a utter domination, right? And this one, I feel like this could we, we probably could get another Brandon Moreno and Figgy in our hands right here. It's it's possible. You know what I mean? Like who knows? 
who fucking knows um i did want to share this picture though um with how tight that fucking lock was in it was so fucking tight that as soon as they let it go there's a clear mark on the face of valentina shachenko yeah at that point fucking crazy you gotta call it quits no matter who you are yeah um, good ass fight oh uh, walter chris what's good <laughs> busted nut 29 have also chris hold this l fuck already uh rough crowd rough crowd lionel commas grosso literally trained and accepted and expected valentina to do that though uh she posted the video from yeah yeah that's uh i want to see if i could find that somewhere on twitter um let me try to find it ed what else you got to say about the fight i think that's it i'm ready for the main event let me try to find that video that uh, that line was talking about. Mm, you better find Zehudo's too. Zehudo yeah. training John. Mm, fuck. I don't know if I'm going to find this. If I could... Is there a hashtag on it? Let's see. Oh, yeah. It's, it's already right here. Well, this is one of them. This isn't the one that I saw. Let me, uh... Alright, right, yeah, so you can kind of see it right there. So they, like, her her sparring partner was training, boom, there's a, there's a back kick, and uh, Grosso needs to immediately recognize that. Gets close enough to where it goes around her, not necessarily at her. And eventually it's takes it back. It's crazy how it played out exactly how we're training with. Yeah. And then eventually we'll, you know, they doesn't go for the choke on that one, but there's a lot of inappropriate stuff I might get canceled on here. Yeah, look, people snorting coke. Nice. Um, Show this thread. Let's see what's on this thread. All right. I think we should just <clears throat> move on. That is true. All right, Ed. Well, I'll let you cover this one because uh, John Jones is your goat. Uh, well, to be fair, he's all of our goats. I don't have anything against John Jones. He's uh, He put on the a pretty good performance. I'm very upset with Terrell Khan, though. Uh, Ed, go ahead. The floor is yours. Yeah, I mean, when building up for this fight, we kind of both said it. Like, no, don't sleep on Terrell Khan. You know, I said it. You said it. Lino said it. You know, and we did hear a lot of people like, nah, John's going to come over here and, like, run over Cyril Gone. And it's like, yeah, but have you seen Cyril Gone fight, you know? And in this case, like, we have. We've seen it. We saw how we fought Francis, you know, how we barely squeezed, you know, through a loss. And it's like, holy shit, his striking's on another level. And then here comes the fight, you know, beginning of the fight. Obviously, the build-up, the hype, and everything's like, holy shit, they're both here. Like, it was crazy. And then, boom, we get, like, a little killer because Gon landed, like, a um, a growing shot. And then it kind of slowed it down. And then, to be honest and to be fair, from the very beginning, John strikes it didn't look to be all that fast. Um, and I was kind of like, oh, man, like, that doesn't look too good. You know, that first hook he threw... Um, but man, Cyril threw a punch. As soon as he threw that punch, man, John ducked under it, took his back, and I was like, holy shit, he's going to work here. Went to work, took him to the cage, put him in a position, um, you know, didn't force a takedown, didn't, you know, shoot. He just kind of like bullied him, <laughs> got him down. Gone was trying to sneak back to the cage, you know, and then that's where, okay, it's like, it's kind of like Ryan Bader and John Jones, where Jones had Bader um, ass to the ground, you know, looking to get the mount instead of getting the mount, gets the guillotine from the top and chokes him. Exactly what he did. It shocked me because it, from our angle, the way we were watching it, I was like, it doesn't look like he has it locked in. No. And I was like, oh, like, does he have it yet? Does he have it yet? And then boom, you just see Cyril tap, and I was like, bro, like, what the fuck just happened? Like, on one hand, I'm like, holy shit, John really did that. On the other hand, I'm like, bro, oh, like, that's it? Surreal. Yeah, like, yeah. surreal. That's all you had, man. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And it's like, bro, like, when you see a fight like this, like, do you really think this 
Ngannou can beat this guy? No. Fuck no. And it's like, like no. Um, yeah. And, and you, uh, you like I said, uh, you said it well, and uh, I mean, I alluded it to as as well in the um, in our um, in our pre show. We did say that there was gonna be a takedown, and that as soon as it went to the ground, it was all George John Jones, no matter what. Now, did I think it was gonna happen within two minutes of the first round? No, I said it was gonna happen in the third one. I thought that that John Jones and Surreal Gone were gonna have a very slow first round, feeling each other out. And the second, thought too. And the second round, I thought they were gonna uh pick it up and just have a lot of um standing and striking. And then in the third round, I thought it was gonna go into about three to four minutes of striking, and then John Jones was gonna be like, Hey bitch, this is MMA, take him down and finish it. That's what I thought. And you, Ed, so you like- said it you said it was in the second round. Yeah, yeah, I said it. I said it'd be later on, but John has never been this offensively aggressive since literally like his first few fights against like Leota Machida, um, Shogun Hua, where he was just coming out, you know, looking to get some hits in. Like when he fought uh, Rashad Evans, when he fought Rampage Jackson, it was a lot slower pace. When he fought DC, you know, the aggression wasn't all there, especially in the later fights, like. Dominic Reyes and, you know, Thiago Santos. But, man, he was going after him. He was actually going after him. Weren't the fastest strikes, weren't the sharpest, but he went after him. But, dude, when he just took that back, that reminded me of, you know, Poirier throwing that punch and then Oliveira just, like, swinging on that back that quick. Like, that was scary. If John said it himself, he wants to shift to being primarily a wrestler because he doesn't want to take hits. Um, But, dude, if he can fight like this... And keep a pace and just out muscle people. Holy shit, he can literally win like five more fights in yeah. the UFC before he calls it quits. And yeah. it's already no, no doubt, but just imagine everybody else he could beat. Like, I want to see him in Nganu. That will sell. That will sell it will. so it'll, much. It, it, it'll never happen, though. I can tell you that. That will sell so much, man. Because, because John signed an eight fight deal. You give him the fact, or like you think about, he has seven fights and he's what, like thirty four or thirty six or whatever. He only has so much time left on his clock, and I don't think that's ever gonna happen. If, if I mean, I'm, I'm never gonna say never. It can, but in in two primes, no, I don't think I don't think we'll see that. Um, but dude, that will sell so oh yeah. much. Oh yeah, I, I'm I'm not disagreeing with you. I I agree that that would probably be a big super fight that everybody will want to see. And hey. You know what? Like but, I, I don't want. Ngannou wants to go fight. Like he wants to box Fury. Like bro, what? Yeah, I don't know. Ngannou's on his own shit. I mean, let let him get the bag and let him do what he wants. But as far as like legacy and shit, he won't ever live a legacy like how John Jones did. Okay. The, the John what the if, John Jones legacy is too too big. What if he goes? He boxes Fury. You know that happens. He makes his bag, and then it's like, okay, what if he has another meeting with the UFC? Already has his bag, you know, already made his 30 mil or whatever. That happens. John already has another couple wins. Now it's like, you know, 2024, 2025, right? Or, you know, I'll say like 2024. Yeah. I'll say two years. Just imagine the build up on this. Yeah, it'll be crazy. Um, I think realistically speaking the only way this fight does come about is whenever dana white leaves and well dana white has alluded to it for a minute now that oh whenever i leave oh i'm older now oh i don't only have so much left uh who knows who knows when we'll see him leave but i'm saying if if it's within this generation or in these few couple of years that both fighters have left they they could make it happen i believe if dana leaves a lot of the shit for the UFC is going to go towards the fighters and things like that. And I feel like they could actually make that fight come to fruition. Um, but as of now, I think about the present and it's like John Jones is like I, we, we've said this before. He's the most complete MMA fighter there is. He's fought through generations of fighters and things like that. But it's like it's crazy because his skill set and what he has definitely help, helps him in the long run in this weight division. Because... Yep. All you need to be a successful heavyweight, you don't need athleticism, you don't need wrestling, you don't need all these crazy ass skill sets that you might need at featherweight, at bantamweight, at lightweight, 
and fuck and all these other weight classes all you need is fucking striking if you could if you have some decent striking some decent boxing skills and you could fucking lay it on people that's all you need you don't need to be athletic you don't need to have a big gas tank fuck um Derek Lewis proves just that no offense to Derek Lewis you know I love the guy but still like he's not the most ath- athletic guy he doesn't have the biggest gas tank he, he's not like the most skilled fighter there is but he just has enough power that that's all he needs he just needs that one punch fire to knock people out but now you have someone in John Jones that's the complete has a complete skill set for any type of fighter you pair him with the striker he's going to control the range and he's going to take you down just like he did in this fight if you pair him with the wrestler, well, he's going to fucking clinch you up and drop elbows and shit like that on you and do the oblique kick and fuck up your legs like how we did with uh, Thiago Santos. Um, I just, I literally, literally, Ed, the only fighter that I could ever foresee beating John Jones in this division right now was Surreal Gone, and Surreal Gone got fucking ragdolled in one round. And John Jones said it best himself. I don't come here to win. I come here to dominate. And to be able to fucking take out the number one ranked uh, former interim heavyweight champion and fucking make him tap in round one, something that Francis Ngannou wasn't even able to do, that's fucking crazy to me, dude. Like, and even so, then, like, okay, even with Stipe, like, Stipe, he's going to fight Stipe next, and that's that, That's in the pudding. It, like, proof, in the, proof is in the pudding. He's going to fight him next. Stipe, I feel like, has more of a complete skill set to be able to fight John Jones. He has like uh, like more things than just striking, right? Probably ground game and all that. I don't know too much, but I still don't. I still don't see where Stipe beats John Jones. I see it going the same way. Honestly, I'm not gonna mm-hmm. lie to you. He's he's gonna be up there for a while, and we literally have the baddest man on the planet, the fucking goat. Dude, if I, anything, we, Aspinall, Aspinall, and Blades are probably the biggest comp. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's what I said too. Um, so where where does John Jones after this fight? Where does he land pound for pound? In he's your number eyes? one. He's number one. You there's there's you no think, debate. You think he goes to number one right off the bat? Yep. There's there you can't like like the whole reason he got off of the rankings was because he was inactive. Now, again, yeah. we talk about ring rust and, and all this shit that happens to fighters when they take so much time off. You know, usually these people take time off and they don't fight and then they come back and that's where they get the rust. John Jones wasn't taking time off, dude. He was training and he was learning. And I feel like that's even more impressive, Ed. I think it's more impressive that you take all this time off, go to another weight division, fight for the title, still win, with your fucking legacy, your your resume, your pound for pound ranking, all the things you've done, it only it's it's even more impressing now. It's even yeah. more impressing. I like, and I remember we talked about this too after the the Volkanovski fight, and or prior to that, we would say like, well, what if this happens? What if that happens? And I I remember telling you that, dude, if John Jones goes in there and just beats the real gone, I even told you if it was like a, a split decision, uh it would he would still be number one because he did it but the fact that he went in there did what he did took three years off went to a new weight division arguably the fucking hardest weight division to go to because you have from what from from featherweight to lightweight that's 10 pounds from fucking middleweight to um light heavyweight that's 20 pounds from light heavyweight to heavyweight bro that's 30 plus pounds dude you know what I mean? And it's like, you can't, there's just no debate. There's no debate. Like, and I don't, I don't know if there ever will be. John Jones is the greatest of all time. If you believe it or not, it's like biases aside, opinions aside, hatred aside. He's just the greatest of all time. You know, that's all I can say. That's all there is. Hashtag or not given. All right, Gonzo, with that being said, matchmaking-wise, we'll start off, I say, Walter Waits, Jeff Neal, Shafka. Who does Shafka get next? Uh, Walter Waits, Walter Waits, Walter Waits. Okay, here we go. Shafka Rachmanov. Okay, it looks like they already updated it, I think. Yes, they did, but... Okay. Shafka Rachmanov. Uh, ooh. 
Mm. I don't know. Hot oh, take. Oh no, no, it's just not. It's not. It's not there. Hot take. What if he fights uh, Jack Della Maddalena? Oh, uh, I. Um, that is. It's a hot take in regards to the fact that Shafkot's probably is gonna is ranked number seven, and Jack Della Maddalena is a rank fourteen. If they were to size up Jack Della Maddalena with like Sean Brady, then maybe I could see that fight also happening. But I don't know. Um, Shafkot Rachmanov, I think. Wonder Boy is probably the the best matchup he could get. Hamza needs to fight someone like Balil Muhammad. Well, well Shafkat. Hamza, yeah. Dana already said Shafkat and Colby is interesting. Somebody brought it up and he said he's interested in that. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting for sure. Um, just thinking about. Uh, You've never seen Gilbert and Colby though. No. Still waiting on that. Yeah, I would like to see that fight happen too. Colby's frustrating me a little bit. I mean, I know he has all this legal shit going on with him, dude, but it's like he's just letting time pass, man. He's letting time pass, and I don't. This is a one. Of, this is another one of those cases where it's. Well, like, we're already getting a Masvidal fight. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But it's like Colby. Colby, like, like I don't want to shit on Masvidal, but like he's a, you. It's clear that he's already at the tail end of his career. Colby, on the other hand, uh, yeah, fuck, he's in his he's, prime. He's still up. Yeah, he's still up there, and I just. It sucks and it's frustrating with Colby because I actually, beside like putting his like persona and everything aside, I actually really like Colby. I think he's a, he's a pretty cool uh, fighter and uh, I mean his persona and shit's pretty funny to me. Um, he just needs to really get it together and like not let his athletic prime go to waste because fuck dude, like if he could etch out one more win and Leon Edwards etches out another win, then Colby could fight Edwards and I could definitely foresee. Colby beating Edwards. But I don't know. We'll we'll just have to wait and see on that. Uh, who We're do you... Get Gilbert Burns and Mazadal. Yeah. Uh, um, what's what's next, Ed? Do you, um, for Shafka, what do you think? I just said hot take Jack Dylan Madalena. If not, you know... Belil's already up there. I don't think Belil should have to reach down anymore. Um, but it's either I'd, I'd say give him Colby, fuck it, feed him Colby. We'll see what happens. Yeah, because um, Hamza, who knows what the fuck Hamza's doing? Unless you're gonna do that, unless you're gonna fucking make that fight happen. Uh, Busting Nut Twenty Nine said, uh, Belil or Colby. Yeah, that's not bad at all. I I would like that, but if they if they take their time with Shafkat, then they're gonna give him uh Wonder Boy. I feel like for the the next fight, uh, Valentina and. Alexa Grasso, I think it's clear as day. We should just see him run it back. Yeah, they're gonna run it back for sure. Um, but dude, it's like that—that that, the way the UFC operates. Yeah, they that, gotta run it back. The flyweight division's getting a little interesting, though. Aaron yeah. Blanchfield, yeah, we have. She's Aaron. really good. Talia Santos is really good. Jessica Andrade, Kaylin Chukagan. Yeah, there, there's a lot. There's a lot of talent right now. So. It's glad to see it. I'm glad to see it, you know? Yeah, I mean, Valentina lapped him. So for this to actually get interesting now, like, it's going to be a fight for her. And then who knows, Wei Li Zhang, she wants to come up and fight somebody too. So we'll see how that goes down down the line. Yeah. And then in the heavyweights, I mean, it's kind of already written in the stone. We're going to get John Jones and Stipe. I think John washes him. Not gonna lie to you. That's my early take, my early prediction. Cyril Gone, on the other hand, you know, I don't know. What if he fights Pavlovich? Yeah, they're probably gonna go and pl- Pav- add Pavlovich. That one's gonna be interesting because Pavlovich just bull rushes people. So who knows? I, I still want to see a fucking Tom Aspen on and tied to a boss. Like, give the fans what they fucking want, man. I want to see that fight. But yeah, Surreal Gone versus pa- uh, Pavlovich. I agree with that one. Or Curtis Blaze. That one that one wouldn't be bad either. But I think Curtis Blaze is already fighting someone, isn't he? I think Curtis Blaze is fighting uh Pavlovich. Pavlovich. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was gonna say. Yeah, so I guess we'll okay. see how how I would say the the winner of that one fight's gone. Easy yeah. Well the winner of that could fight for the belt, actually. Yeah, that's true too. The loser of it then. Yeah. Not a bad take. Because Gon's already like one and three in his last, or what is he? Like two and four in his last four? 
Yeah. Or two and two, whatever. Yeah, something like two. that. One, one and two in his last three. There you go. Mm. One and two in his last three. So, who knows? But holy shit, dude. The GOAT came back. He is back, dude. I don't, I don't want to hear any debates. The women GOAT got knocked off. Mm-hmm. Alexa Grasso, man, shocked the fucking world. Yeah. Dafka, you know, Bo Nichols here. Well, Ian yeah, was... Gary, let me sprinkle some Ian Gary. <laughs> U- UFC's in good hands. Next week, though, we're going to get Murad Dushili and Piotr Jan. That's going to be a good fight. But fuck, man, that's all I got today. That's yeah, all that's... I got. Thank you. Thanks for everybody stopping by. Yeah, that's all I got, too. Well, that just about does it for us, guys. Oh, wait. Forgot. The rankings. Oh. Yeah, I forgot all about that. I hope you were doing that. Yeah, I don't have Gym 5-0's picks. Oh, pfft. You have them? Uh, yeah. They, I they give them out of you. Let me see them. I'll start off with uh, Mark and Rick Derula. Uh, so they both pretty much had the same card aside from Jalen Turner and Matias Gamra. Rick Derula is on an undefeated streak moving up with that win because he had Gamra bust a nut and Ovato Chris. This was the title eliminator. Bust a nut came true as well because he had Gamra. Lionel Kamas, um, he took a dub because he had Shafkat Rakhbanov, um, whereas Wanet had um, in his first title fight. Blows it, shits the bed, he's gone, <laughs> washed, because um, he chose Jeff Neal, which, you know, if he came up with that, that would have been fucking crazy. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so Lionel Kamas and Bust the Nut, looks like we're getting a rematch coming soon. Again? Rick Derula, Rick Derula I think he's on his way to to um, battle Walnut Head, and then I don't know Aaron. Um, who did Jim 5 have? Uh, Jim 5 went 4-1. and one. He had Bo Nickel... Or no, he went three and three and two. He had Bo Nickel, um, Jalen Turner lost, Jeff Neal he lost, and then but he he got both dubs in the co-main and the main event. So he had okay, Alexa well, Grosso and John Jones winning. Yeah, Aaron also went three and two, but I think since he had the Grosso fight, that is a tiebreaker. Yeah. So Jim Five O gets a dub here. That's the boy Jim 5-0. Hold on. Yeah, the boy Jim 5-0 came through. Um, whenever he sent me that, I was like, fuck, dude, hopefully. And, well, he pulled it off, so. But, yeah, that, that basically does it for us, guys. Ed, what else do you got? That's it. All right, dude. Happy Monday. Let's get this shit going. Yes, sir. Saturday, I'm, tune in. Uh, grinding it all out, so. Uh, but, yeah, guys. That does it for us for UFC 285. I'm Gonzo. That's the boy Ed over there. Uh, catch us on the next one. We still don't know what, what the schedule looks like, but be on the lookout for our Twitter. We will up- update you guys and let you guys know. Other than that, we will catch you guys on the next one. This is Rear Naked Takes. Everyone have a great night. And, uh, yeah, have a great night. <laughs> we out.